the overture from A Chorus Line. On the 26th of January 1974, a group of Broadway dancers gathered together for what would become Michael Bennett's first taping session. He got them to open up and speak about their lives. These stories are told in a chorus line. On the first day of rehearsals for the London Revival, history repeated itself and Bob Avian asked us to talk about our lives. From that moment, I wanted to record these stories. I interviewed most of the cast with the same questions and I even got Simon Harvick to interview me too. This is the London cast of A Chorus Line in Off The Line. My name's Lucy Jane Adcock. Georgie Ashford. Ed Curry. Francis Day. Shagan Fawley. Harry Francis. Rebecca Jacopazzi. Victoria Hamilton Barrett. Katie Hards. Simon Hardwick. James T. Lane. Mark Leslie. Daisy Maywood. Alice Jane Murray. Genevieve McCarthy. Ashley Nottingham. Alistair Postlethwaite. Andy Rees. Adam Salter. Alexandra Sarmiento. Michael Steeden. Scarlett Strallen. Vicky Lee Taylor. John Suris. Gary Watson. Gary Woods. Lee Zimmerman. Rebecca Hazelon. Yeah? Sorry. <laughs> you mean you, this is just me, right? I'm not having to be anyone else. <laughs> Harry, stop it. My real name is Mike Jacob. Scarlett A. May Bain Strallen. Daisy May Wood. Lua Shigi Fawoli. But my married name is going to be Rebecca Salter. Ta-da! Um, I was born in Grimsby, New York City. Hatton Dwight. Swindon. Philadelphia. Sydney. Canada. Lancashire. A little town called Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. I'm 19. I am very proud 44. I started dancing because my sisters did, and I thought I could do it better than them. I started dancing because my sister was doing it and was getting more attention than I was. I guess my family sort of were my inspiration to start dancing. My mother probably inspired me the most. Um, my mother was a beautiful dancer. She danced with the Royal Ballet and English National Ballet. Um, my father is also a dancer and my aunt is an all-round performer, so lots of inspiration growing up. My mother, as she is, well, she was a dancer, a professional dancer, um, now she's a dance teacher and I always used to just dance around with her in Australia and from then on. Well, my nanny Pam is um, a lover of theatre and she took me to see the Royal Valley for the first time when I was about I was about eight and I think it was a nutcracker. Um, I remember my grandmother brought a video that she recorded of Matthew Bourne's Nutcracker. I, I was inspired to start dancing by lots of old school variety type people. Like I remember being a big fan of Roy Castle. There was a guy called Jimmy Johnson, um, who was in Oklahoma. I, mean, I don't know about dancing, uh, but performing, I would say maybe the likes of um, Jennifer Saunders. Uh, Dawn French and Joanna Longley. My auntie Pearl Primus, who is Alvin Ailey's assistant. Yeah, no, I'm really, really lucky that my parents have been behind me the whole way. My family have always been very supportive. They did support it. My dad always said that I needed a backup. Um, and then at the last minute I decided that that's not what I wanted to do and I wanted to do like proper A-levels and my mum talked me into doing the performing arts course. You know, she said that it was definitely something that you're so passionate about, so, you know, she really sort of, yeah, taught me into doing it, even though I was quite doubtful, which is sort of, which is funny, Some most of the time it's the other way around. Yeah, my brother's always told me that I uh, don't come back gay, um, so that was, so their support was always a bit like, which is funny now because my brother Andrew actually loves musical theatre and he comes down, he's seen Wicked like five times. I thought you were your brother's now gay, I thought. No, that would be hilarious, that would be <laughs> now, it's <laughs> cock. <laughs> I don't think at the beginning my mum wanted me to be a dancer because she knows what it's like and she knows how hard it is. And originally I wanted to be a gymnast, but because I became an avatar, I was not able to be a gymnast. <laughs> I don't know if they really had a choice in the matter. I mean, I was doing it, <laughs> you know, I was doing it and they liked that I was doing it. So I was never allowed to go, to go dancing because they didn't see it as a serious career for me. Um, so I took myself. Obviously growing up around it, I knew um, all the pitfalls as well as the wonderful things that come with it. I knew how tired they were. Um, I knew it was exhausting for them and they'd be crawling out of bed to get me to school in the morning. But um, in my mind there was nothing else that I would have wanted to have done in my life. I consider giving up every time I go to an audition and that is no word of a lie. Uh, 
I've absolutely had moments when I've thought about giving up. Um, more recently, really, um, in those periods out of work, uh, when the doubts creep in and you feel like you'll never get employed again. All the time I, I, I want to give up and then I realise I, I don't think I can do anything else. No. Never. Yes, right, uh, when I was at college, most of the teachers told me I'd never work in this industry. So in my second year I considered quitting and going on something else, but I didn't, thank God. When I was about 21, I, I was, um, I couldn't afford to do ballet class and rent because I'm from up north. So I lived at the Piccadilly Theatre. So I actually, you know, my sleep, I had a sleeping bag there. I lived in Janie Dee's dressing room um, for six months. Um, and during that time, there was a time where I was just like thinking, this is ridiculous, I might as well just pack my bags and go back to Preston because uh, I had no money. But luckily I got a job uh, with Scottish Ballet and, you know, yeah, after six months. But that was probably a real like moment where I was, yeah, I was going to give up. And to think that was 11 years ago is quite scary. I'm still doing it. Big school, secondary school, is slightly awkward because I never really told anyone. Um, however, at the end of the first year, I'd enter the dance festival and do this big tap routine and then they'll all be, whoa! Um, but because it was tap and it was so fast and the boys would be, oh my God, what, what's all that going on? So it was seen as quite groovy, quite cool. Um, I never told anyone really that I was doing ballet alongside it. It was just seen as that's the tap boy kind of thing. Yeah. You know, the, the, the better I got at it, uh, the bullies kind of leave me, left me alone, you know, because I was really good at it. So they really couldn't say anything. My friends knew, and then other people found out, and I used to get ridiculed quite a lot. So for several years, I did stop. When I was at primary school, the nice thing about not being in a theatre school at that age is you're the only one who does it. When you're going off into the West End, doing all these shows as a kid, you're the only one there. So there's something mm. quite special about that. And I never really got teased really at primary school, everyone thought it was quite cool that I was doing all of this, mm. but I think everyone knew because every Wednesday I would um, it'd get to a certain point in the morning and I'd hear my mum's keys because she'd be walking down the corridor coming to drive me off to do a matinee, and so everyone knew that there'd be a certain point on a Wednesday where you know the door would open, my mum would take me out and I'd be out there mm. and I'd be off to the West End. My first TV appearance was at the age of seven, um, which was strange, the girls were kind of amused by it, the boys saw it as an opportunity to sort of, you know, bully and have a go at that age. It was all very new to them, but I was very lucky actually. I looked like the type that would be bullied, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, my first job was I, when I was in college, and I was in my third year in college, and I got uh, sat in my fever at the uh, Victoria Apollo, and I was kind of beside myself, and I always remember going home to my flat, and it sounds so dramatic, but it's completely true. I like slumped in the whole area of my, of my flat for about an hour, just completely, completely in disbelief that I got the job and uh, just totally beside myself that I actually managed to, to get a job and it was West End and it was kind of like all my dreams come true, you know. Uh, Chorus Line is my first job. So it was a pretty incredible experience to audition for. I auditioned for Matthew Bourne. And um, I just thought there was no chance because when I was 18, I looked about 12 years of age because I thought that great casting ability. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he, uh, I had a phone call off him and he offered me to be his first ever apprentice. And I just remembered things like walking around London or being on an escalator and looking at people and going, oh, you know, if only they knew I was in Matthew Bourne's one. Like, I was so proud. I just wanted to tell everybody. It was amazing. And I was in a rehearsal for my third year show and I saw my agent ringing me and, uh, and I'd just been in for the Lumiers and uh, so I left the rehearsal really sneakily I think I was supposed to be in there for singing or something or other and they told me that I got the job so I just sort of walked back in and went I'm really sorry but I'm going to have to leave now I left the Boston Ballet because they cut all the tall people and all the short people out of the company they wanted everybody to look the same and at 18 years old I thought my life was over and really had it had just begun um, but I knew it was a little bit of a challenge because I was so tall to find another ballet company and I auditioned for Peter Martins and Bershnikov and everybody and they would always say you're a beautiful dancer but you don't fit in the company and that's when I started to think what am I going to do and I went back to college and I 
you know, I always had that voice of my parents in my head going, something to fall back on, something to fall back on. And I knew it wasn't right, but I kept, you know, I kept putting one foot in front of the other and going to school. And then I auditioned for my first Broadway show and got it because I was tall. And because at the time Tommy Toon was looking for five nine and over and not five nine and under. And so I and then that was just the beginning of all of the stuff that I've been able to do now. My first job um, was in Winnipeg at like an outdoor theater and I got my Canadian equity card from it and it was um, a production of Crazy For You. And the, one of the choreographer had done the show in Toronto so we got to do all of Susan Strong's choreography illegally, which was amazing. And I was 17, 17. On my very first job, I was eight years old in a show called um, Aspects of Love and I used to go and sit in the theatre with my father who was in the show and there was a young girl in it and I begged him to audition when the next castings for it were and I went along and got it and they, I think they told me after about a week and I was just absolutely desperate every day asking them if they could find out. Um, so it started from there. Um, but the, ad, the adult job, I was 16, um, and I went for a job called Mamma Mia, uh, the very first cast. I didn't know any ABBA songs, embarrassingly. They asked me to sing one, and I didn't know any, because I was so young. So I was having a tough time at college. Confidence was completely all over the place. And it was my first year, so it was during half term, towards the end of the year. And like I always do, I went off to ballet class during half term because I thought I'm going to go back to my old dance teacher or whatever and I'm going to get myself motivated again. And I'm so glad I did because I was in a ballet class of dance works mm. and the director and the casting director of West Side Story looked through the window and they spotted me. And they said to the guys, can you tell him to come down and talk to us afterwards? So I walked out of class and they said, um, Harry, can you go down and speak to the team downstairs? So I was age 16, I was standing there in my ballet tights and stuff, and I walked into the room and they said, um, can you do a jesse from the corner? So I showed them so they could all, the whole panel could see that I had some sort of, some sort of technique. And then they said, can you sing? And I said, well, actually, yes, musical theatre is my background. And then they sent me loads of material and I did about four rounds or something like that. Maybe not even that, maybe three rounds. And I had the job, I think, the week after that.